Okay, if you're looking for that light, airy chocolate sponge cake, the type that you find at the bakery, then I 100% promise you that this chocolate sponge cake recipe is it. So to start off, you want to preheat your oven to 160C or 320F with the fan on, and place a piece of baking paper on the bottom of two 8-inch cake tins without greasing the bottom. Now usually you would grease or line the sides, but today we aren't going to be doing that, so you just want to leave your cake tins Ungreased. This is just going to help prevent our sponge cakes from deflating once they're taken out of the oven. So set these aside and in a small bowl combine your dry ingredients. So I've got two tablespoons of all-purpose flour, a third cup of cornstarch, two tablespoons of cocoa powder, one teaspoon of instant coffee powder, a quarter teaspoon of baking powder, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. And then I'm just using a spoon to mix it all together. You don't need to sift it just yet. Set that aside and now we're going to separate the yolks and whites from four eggs. So I just like to use my hands for this, I find it a lot easier and my egg yolks are less likely to break that way. Okay, once that's done, in a medium-sized bowl add in your four egg whites and an eighth of a teaspoon of vinegar and using either a hand or stand mixer, whip on a medium-high for about 30 seconds until it's frothy and then gradually add in a third of a cup of white granulated sugar. Once that's added in, mix on medium-high for a further two minutes and then mix on low for one minute and this will just help to get rid of any large air bubbles and give you a more stable batter in the end. It's really important to make sure your whisks or your bowl have no fat on them, otherwise your egg whites won't whip up properly. So your egg whites should look like this in the end, which is known as stiff peaks. And if it's not quite there yet, then just keep mixing until you get there. But you just want to be careful not to overmix your egg whites because this can cause your sponge cake to collapse when it's baking. I have done a video on how to properly whip up egg whites, which I'll post a link to below. Okay, now set your egg whites aside and in a large bowl add in a third of a cup of white granulated sugar along with one and a half tablespoons of warm water and mix that together so that the the sugar is coated in the water. To that, add in your four egg yolks and two teaspoons of vanilla, and then beat on a medium high speed for four minutes, and then turn your mixer down to low and beat for a further minute. Once done, your egg yolk mixture should be thick and you should be able to create kind of ribbons with it like this. Next, stream in two tablespoons of unflavored vegetable oil with your mixer on a medium speed and mix until well combined. Now to finish off, you want to add in half of your egg white mixture and gently fold that with a spatula until just combined. It's okay if there are a few little lumps, but try not to push out too many of the air bubbles. Then you want to sift in your dry ingredients, and this is just going to help with the airy texture of our sponge cake. And then gently fold that in until just combined, and then finish off by adding in your remaining egg whites and gently fold that through until just combined. You can use your spatula to gently break up any large lumps of egg whites, but again, do not overmix. Okay, so that is our batter all done. You should have this kind of consistency. And now you just want to evenly distribute the batter into our two 8-inch cake tins. Once that's done, drop your cake tins lightly onto your counter to remove any large air bubbles. And then I also just like to run a toothpick through my batter as well. Okay, and now these are going to go into the oven for 20 minutes. Now to check if they're done, just gently touch the top and it should make a little indent that slowly bounces back. Or you can check with a toothpick too, and if it comes out clean, then it's ready. Once the cakes are done, the next steps are super important, so you want to make sure that you do them straight away. So first, you want to drop the tins from a height of about 10 centimeters to release some of the steam, and then you want to immediately turn them over onto a wire rack while they're still in the cake tins to completely cool. So about an hour later, turn your cake tins over and your cake layers should still be nice and risen like this. And then you just want to run a thin knife around the edges to release the cakes from the cake tins and then turn them out onto a wire rack. But then you want to flip them over again so that the cakes are the right side up. Now a little trick to make your cake layers look nice and neat is to gently rub the tops off so that, you know, that little thin layer comes off and then do the same for the sides as well. 
I honestly can't tell you how incredibly soft these cake layers are. I mean, just look at this close up and how easily I can just kind of bend the sponge cake layers and they don't even break. Now, because sponge cakes don't have a lot of fat in them, they can dry out just a little bit quicker than regular cakes. And so I like to brush my sponges with a little bit of simple syrup. So to make my simple syrup, I'm just combining a quarter cup of white granulated sugar and a quarter cup of hot water together, and then mixing that together until the sugar is fully dissolved. And then I'm just using a pastry brush to generously cover the top and sides of my sponge cakes with the simple syrup. You can get creative with your simple syrup too and add other flavors like coffee or do it with a flavored milk. Okay, now to fill these sponge cakes, I'm first going to be making a raspberry jam filling. It is literally one of the easiest things to make. So you just want to start off by placing a saucepan over a low heat and add in one cup of frozen raspberries, three quarters of a tablespoon of cornstarch, one tablespoon of lemon juice, and three tablespoons of white granulated sugar. Then you just wanna give that all a little mix and just let it slowly heat up until the raspberries kind of break apart and everything comes together into a liquidy mixture. And then you basically just wanna keep mixing this for a few minutes until it starts to thicken up. So a few minutes later, this is what my raspberry jam filling looks like. So it has thickened up quite a bit, which is what we want. And now the next step to do is just to take this off the heat and pour it into a heat proof bowl or jar, whatever you want really, and then just let it come to room temperature it will continue to thicken up as it cools. Now I've just placed my raspberry filling in the fridge to cool and in the meantime we're going to be making a chocolate whipped cream. So all you want to do is to a bowl add in two cups of cold whipping cream, three tablespoons of cocoa powder, three tablespoons of icing sugar and half a teaspoon of vanilla. And then using a whisk, I'm just going to hand whip that until I reach stiff peaks. You can use a mixer for this too, but just be really careful not to over whip your cream. Okay, so that is our chocolate cream all done. It smells so good. And now we are ready to stack our cake. So to stack my cake, I'm starting off by placing my first cake layer onto my cake stand and then spreading out a nice thin layer of my raspberry jam. Next, I'm placing some cut up strawberries all around the top. I just like to halve mine and then place them upside down. And then I'm just going to spread out a generous amount of my chocolate whipped cream on the top and smooth it out with my offset spatula. Then my next cake layer goes on top and then I'm just going to go straight in with my chocolate whipped cream again and spread that out. and then I'm just placing some more strawberries on the top to decorate, and then that is it. My chocolate sponge cake is all done. This cake is honestly so, so super light. It is incredibly delicious and has a beautiful note of chocolate running through the cake without being too much. Mmm, that is incredibly good. It is so incredibly light. I could probably eat this whole cake myself. And the strawberries and that raspberry jam just pair perfectly with the chocolate. If you try out this recipe, don't forget to leave a review on my blog. It really helps my content reach more people and I love hearing from you guys. I'll see you in the next video.